All right. Thanks for coming in, folks. We got the burn wrapped up. What I'd like to do is jump into an after action review for the uh, Horse Creek prescribed burn. Yeah. And uh, is, is, is an eight yard really necessary? I just, I guess I'm a little concerned. Did we do something wrong? Did I know we got the spot fire and everything, but. Um, I guess I just really understand the AARs. I'm kind of concerned that oh, yeah, no we problem, got some Pete. sort of trouble or something. No, no. The, the purpose of the after action review is is to focus on the day, take a look at the day's events and focus on the positives and identify the negatives and capture those things so the next time we conduct a burn similar to this or any burn, any, any interagency endeavor, that you know we, we take knowledge with us and we pass it along. It's not about who, it's about what. Okay, it's not about blame. It's not about he said, she said. We're just here to try to learn from these this events and become better at what we do. A structured debriefing, for lack yeah. of a better word? Or? You know, I try to do them as a burn boss after every burn, after every day on every burn, and even, you know, on wildfires, every chance I get to conduct after action reviews. Uh, once you get familiar with them, they're, they're great tools. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing a lot more of them. I just have never really had the opportunity to sit through one. and so well, I, had, I, was, I had some conceptions coming in, so. Well, and, that, you know, it would be great if you could take some notes for us. Sure. I'd be happy to. And, and one thing that's really important is that we capture these ideas, because we all forget when we drive off, drive out of here. Um, but what, what I'd like to do is capture these ideas, put them in the burn plan and the whole package, so the next person that comes in can take it off the shelf and see the, you know, the, the after action review roll up and the lessons learned. Now, what we don't do is, again, we don't assign blame. So it's not about, I know I'm babbling here, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it going. We're not, it's not about who, it's about what, okay? So like what would be captured in Pete's notes will be, um, you know, for example, uh, the drip torches weren't full. Now, if we knew that Lathe didn't fill the drip torches, we don't need to put that in the notes. We just identify drip torches need to be filled the night before, and we leave names out of it. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, so it's really not an investigation. No, it's no, it's not an investigation. A it's not a review. finding to, to, to learn a lesson. Gonna take, got it's going to take about 20 minutes, okay. and it'd be good stuff. We were going well, had a good window, we were going for it, and uh, having a good time down there. And we got to about where that flag is roughly, and, and the, the prep was terrible. Um, I don't know who the joker was that was doing the prep in there, but uh, it was, it was re really terrible. We still had a window, we kind of continued to push, push down south. Okay, so if I understand you right, you, you feel like the prep was not up to, up to specs? Yeah, it was terrible. Okay. Uh, does anyone agree with Chris on the, on the prep? Um, going back to the rushing the uh, briefing uh, point, uh, I think another thing that could have been discussed that wasn't really discussed in the briefing was uh, trigger points and uh, contingency planning. Um, I think it all worked out well with the spot, but I, I think that that could have been discussed on what, you know, if certain weather, certain uh, parameters were hit that, that that trigger point was there and we could have maybe eliminated that spot. Um, but ending on a positive note, I, I think everybody's situational awareness was excellent with the spot and um, how everybody reacted to the spot. And then we continued on with, uh, with the rest of the burn. I thought that was excellent. That's an excellent example of why we do after action reviews. Uh, Scott brought, brought up trigger points. You know, we do it on wildfires. I didn't bring it up in briefing. There's no reason why we couldn't have set up trigger points on the burn. It's a real good capture. I'm glad you spoke up on that one. Yeah, we uh, we asked Travis to come down and give us a hand, and uh, um, you know I did the best I could line him out. Uh, you know we just we got so much going on with IFPM meetings, FPA meetings, yeah. stuff to do, targets to meet, no budget. Uh, yeah, I, I think you know we definitely had to talk. We drove out there to the creek and where the road met the creek, and, and we talked about it for a little while. Then I kind of left him on his own, and you know to be honest with you, I probably left it as prepping as you would want to hold it, and and I didn't give him a whole lot of direction, but. 
you know, I would love to. Back in the old days, we should have, would, sure would have had time, been out there hand in hand with him. But you know, I just got so many meetings to go to these days. And well, you it's know, crazy. And like I said, I think we all know how you feel, Pete. But all those meetings and all those pressures, they weren't out here today. You know, we got to focus on today's events. So, uh, Travis, you're up there. Did you feel the wind shift? Oh, yeah. Okay, what were you thinking as, as a holding boss when the wind shifted? Uh, just got to deal with it. Okay, any changes in resources or anything, or you were just kind of waiting to see, or? Yeah, just doing my job. Did, did you give any additional directions or assignments to folks, or? Not until we got that spot fire. Okay, Travis, back to you on holding. Final say on this. Uh, seems to be a group consensus that uh, the ignition pattern might have been a little quick. Your thoughts? Yeah, people, people uh, do things differently. Everybody's got their way of doing things, so. How would you have lit it if you were ignition? I, I, I probably would have slowed it up a little bit, especially I knew that, that there was some prep issues and you know at that point that's the situation you're in you can't change that now so what can you control it's what it's you know your what your how much fire you're putting on the ground so you're in the situation you can complain about it all you want but you know what you can change it now did pattern. you did you talk to Chris did you tell him you thought the ignition was too fast no Chris did you mention that you thought the holding was was inadequate? No. So, what do you guys think? Is there... I'll, I'll agree that, yeah, we, we probably could have slowed down a little bit, um, especially we had it really good at the beginning. Had we known about the prep a little bit, we could have slowed down, got that stuff in place, and we kind of got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'll agree to that. You know, we, we should have scouted that out a little bit better as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. We, we probably could have slowed down a little bit, but we had a good window. But Okay. So it sounds like, Pete, I hope you're getting this stuff. And we'll... on, the, uh, on the spot fire lathe, uh, as you responded to the spot, you had mentioned something about knowing the wind would do what it did? Yeah, it, uh, about that time every day it kind of it shifts, comes right out of the west like that. Now, did you, did you bring that up? I don't remember hearing well, that. Well... I told my guys, I didn't, you know, it, I didn't feel like you, know, you guys would listen, you know, to be honest. I mean, a lot of times these, uh, you know, things get going and, you know, the engine foremans, uh, uh, engine people are just holding. And so I didn't say anything. And maybe I should have, but would you guys have listened? You bet. I mean, you're one of the best firefighters in, in this zone. Everybody knows that. You've been here forever. Well, I just, you know, I, I didn't feel like uh, you guys were going to, go along, you know, you, I don't know, it was a rush situation, maybe I would have brought it up, you know, and maybe if you could have asked, you know, each of us, so you kind of did your briefing and then we were lighting, so. Okay, that's a good point, we should have, definitely could have included you more. Now, Scott, you've been pretty quiet over there. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't thoughts? said a whole lot today. Um, Why? Uh, just uh, quiet in nature. Today, Curtis, I, I noticed a couple of things. Uh, one, I, I believe that um, in the morning that the, there was a, a rush in the briefing. I don't think it was as thorough as it could have been. Also, with that said, uh, we didn't discuss uh, trigger points um, and contingency planning, which uh, became a became a factor uh, today with with the spot fire. Um, with all that said, uh, ending on a positive note, I, I felt that all of us collectively had a, had a good situational awareness. Um, we all uh, attacked the spot fire, and then um, Chris and uh, Travis could uh, move on with the burn back down into Horse Creek there. So I, I think overall it was a great day. All right. Well, those are excellent suggestions. I'm, I'm glad you spoke up.
ahead of time. Well, you know, Junior, I mean, the, the first part was pretty good. The southern portion was terrible. I mean, I, that's a big contributing reason why we had to. I think we nailed that down, Chris, that the, the specs were an issue. What, what I'd like to focus on is, is why the specs weren't, or why the prep was not up to the specifications. Uh, holding folks, how'd you feel about the test fire? I think we all got together once the test fire was lit and we were in agreement that uh, it was meeting the, the initial yeah, objectives. The test fire was going well. We, okay, we were going. Uh, one of the ground rules I probably didn't bring up is not to interrupt folks, just let them say what they, what they need to say. And we'll give you plenty of time, Chris. Lathe, how'd you feel about the ignition? Uh, it was good. I mean, everything was going good. We were accomplishing it. It looked like it would accomplish the task that we had set ahead. So. Okay. Well, the problem was we got down to about where that flag was, and uh, the prep went to minimal or non-existent almost. I don't know who the pinhead that did the prep was, but I mean, it was pitiful. I mean, yeah, okay. my kids could do a better job on prep than that. Well, the, yeah, the person that did the prep was Travis, and pinhead's probably not the right word we need to use here, but Travis, you did do the prep last week, if I remember right. Is that correct? Yep. And how'd you feel about it? You know, I, I don't believe I gave him a copy of the burn plan. Um, it's probably somewhere in burning 101, but uh, I think I missed that day. But you know, um, the other part of it, who, who even scouted the line? Nobody even we'll, we'll scouted that. that. We're working that out, Chris. We'll get yeah, there. Let me, let me finish there, Bub. Um, love to. Back in the old days, we should have, would, sure would have had time, been out there hand in hand with him, but you know, I just got so many meetings to go to these days. And well, you it's know, crazy. I, like I said, I think we all know how you feel, Pete, but. All those meetings and all those pressures, they weren't out here today. You know, we got to focus on today's events. Yeah. It'd be nice if we could make that go away, but we Safety can't. Safety still needs to be the number one concern. We had stuff over the hill. That, would, that dog wouldn't hunt on our district. Well, we're not on your district either, Chris, so we just let's keep focused on today and what we well, did today. Well, we wouldn't lose it at our district either. Well, you can have the next burn and we'll come over there. But what, I want to close this loop on, on this preps, the prep standards, okay, the specifications. Uh, what did you get to work with, Travis? What I'd like to focus on is, is why the specs weren't, or why the prep was not up to the specifications. Well, I mean, not at all excuse but where the agency I come from you get around a historic cabin and you know there's a lot of issues about take only pictures and leave only footprints now okay so who gave you the uh, where did you get your instructions from for the prep how did you achieve this uh, that'd be me just that was GP? I asked Travis Pete? to come down and give us a hand okay now Travis do you feel like the instru Pete's instructions were clear or did you not understand them um, he he, you know, he just, he called me down here to do some prep, some prep and so, and I did it. And Pete, maybe you could enlighten yeah, us. Yeah, um, really what happened, you know, I, we got so much going on and so, so much pressure to get this stuff done. Um, I asked to come down and give a hand because some of my other folks were busy doing other things. We're kind of a small district as it is. You know, I had Lath and Scott busy doing other things. So I had him do it and really I just kind of threw it at him, showed him a map, drove him out to the road at the creek there and and let them have at it and just kind of, so I'm just as much to blame. So do you think you could have given a, given Travis a, a little better briefing, maybe outline the specs? Because I wrote him in the burn plan, but I, I didn't have a chance to meet with him. Yeah, um, so m without a doubt, should have spent a little more time doing that, you know, especially someone bringing someone in outside their own turf. Um, should have been there to help him out a little bit, uh, uh, you know, Maybe we can figure something out. I mean, certainly I relied on his expertise to use his judgment, but uh, if he felt he didn't have guidance, then something for both of us to take home. Okay. Travis, does that sound fair? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could have done, you know, some things on my part, and like I said, you know, the, the prep on this side, nobody really had any issues with that, but like I said, I got around that man back home. If I, if I did what I did back there, right there around that historic cabin, man. I'd, I'd never hear the end of it. Um, and then I, I, I did want to, you know, get out there with somebody because you can't put branches back on a tree. Right. You know, so that's kind of where I was coming from. But I could have I tried to get 
Pete, are you out there to, to look at it? Was there anything else other than the prep that triggered that spot fire? Any other reasons why that spot fire happened? Well, I, you know, everybody does things differently, so, I mean. If you were running ignition, would you have followed the same pattern Chris did? Um, yeah, same pattern. I, I, I just, I don't think I would have gone that fast right there. And that's that's probably a good point. We we had a good window. We were going for it. Uh, I I probably should have scouted that line out ahead of time on some of that, for sure. I saw that first piece. It looked good. I assumed, and that was a bad deal on my part. Assumed that the rest of it was going to be the same. And uh, so yeah, we we okay. probably at least once we got down into there, we were probably going a little bit too fast or a few things as far as uh, we had the wind shift. Uh, the prep wasn't done. We probably burned a little bit too fast, and, and nobody had scouted that out. Had you scouted that out? I had. I'm the burn boss, and I hadn't had time to walk it. So I, that's something I'm taking home from this is, you know, i got to get out there more often. So I, I'm kind of sliding into the, to the, the third, the third uh, question here as to why things happen. But I just want to make sure that, uh, what, that we can confirm what actually happened is, is we saw a little change in fire behavior, and mainly due to a couple reasons that the prep wasn't up to standard and the ignition was probably moving a little too fast yeah are we all in agreement on that you yeah, two I guys agree with that. yeah okay all right cool Does anyone disagree with three things took place out there? Four things. Uh, wasn't a good scouting. Wasn't a good briefing for you for the prep. That's one. Two, the wind shifted. Three, the ignition was a little fast. And four, the line prep was inadequate for the, uh, the fuels. That, that's what I've gathered. Does, that, does anyone disagree with that? Okay. Okay, uh, what do we do next time? What do we learn from today? And what worked well and what didn't work well? One thing that worked really well right off the bat was uh, Lathe having that local knowledge on where resources were and, ha and how to get into those structures because it would have taken some of the other folks that may not have been from here quite a bit longer to get in. Okay, that's a good point. Travis, what worked for you? What didn't work? Uh, what didn't work was me on the prep um, but you know I, I learned some stuff from that uh, I made an assumption and uh, on a smaller picture again using the local knowledge or even or even the people that were giving me direction if I'm not getting it I need to be a little more forceful and in, in, in letting folks know that I'm that I need some more info you know because I'm more than willing to do the work I just don't want to do it wrong, which I did this time, but. And Curtis, we, we went ahead, we went, take a little bit off of, you know, as far as the what. Uh, we, we could have slowed down a little bit, and I could have checked that out ahead of time as far as the prep. Uh, we, we definitely could have burned a little bit slower and communicated a little better with Travis. Okay, these are good points.
Yeah, I, I haven't thoughts? said a whole lot today. Um, Why? Uh, just uh, quiet in nature. But uh, I, I feel that um, a couple things that I've, I recognized today was uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to... I know. Me. And we're rolling and action. I'm just uh, quieting. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Say it. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll just go right into something else. I'm normally, I'm like normally a timid, sheepish type of guy. Do I do wear women's you know underwear? On? I, I just see this. I could just see Curtis's mouth just start getting wider and wider. Right when Marty and I said it, I was like, oh. Remember, the camera's only focusing on you, so it doesn't see yeah, us, right? right? Oh, okay. Yeah. This is what you. Well, would I'm do. the one that this has is, to have Barry. This is what you would do. Find your happy spot right there. Don't be looking at these. This guys. is what you. Okay. We're still rolling. Whenever you're ready to, to do it. Um, today, I, I noticed a, a couple of things that uh, I, I think we could talk about. One is um, the overall rush. <laughs> stop! Oh, I was turning the other way. Oh, I, was I'm over there. Stop. I kept my back turned. I'm not gonna get over That's this. <laughs> okay. All right. All of them over there turned around at the same time. Okay, so guys, so you get off the quiet. Am I? Am I on this? You're on. Okay. Quiet, okay. okay, we're ready. We're rolling. Okay. Uh, I today, Curtis, I, I noticed a couple of things. Uh, one. Uh, I believe that um, in the morning that the, there was a, a rush in the briefing. I don't think it was as thorough as it could have been. Also, with that said, uh, we didn't discuss uh, trigger points um, and contingency planning, which uh, became a became a factor uh, today with with the spot fire. Um, 